welcome back. Today will be the second of our three tutorials on open-ended AICs Type 2. We fully reviewed the basics for AICs Type 2 at the beginning of video number 35, so I won't bother repeating all of that here, okay? If you recall from the last lesson, there are three possible outcomes or cases for these AIC Type 2 chains. Today we will examine case B, which is probably the most common of the three. As you will see, the chains we will be looking at today can also be viewed as discontinuous loops Type 3. And I will explain this a little bit as we are going through the examples. But we will save the formal discussions on discontinuous loops until videos number 41 through number 44, okay? So let's take a look at some type 2 chains where we have only one candidate elimination available. All right, so what we're looking for here is an AIC that begins and ends with a strong link and that begins and ends with two different digit candidates lying in two cells that can see each other, which simply means they must be in the same house. So let's start up here on this candidate 5 in row 1 and make a strong link to this 5. And then we're going to make a weak link down to this 5, and that's a surrogate weak link, which you should all know means we're using a strong link as a weak link. And then we're going to make a strong link to the 9, a weak to that 9, a strong to the 6, a weak to the 6, and finally strong to the 7. So here are the two endpoint cells, and they see each other because they lie in block 1. So now we know we can eliminate the start digit from the end cell and the end digit from the start cell. And the end digit, which is 7, appears in the first cell, so we can eliminate that 7. But the 5, which is the start digit, does not appear in this end cell, so you can't do anything with the 5. You can eliminate the 7, but that's it. Now, if this chain started with the 6, you could eliminate the 6 from this end cell, and you'd be left with a naked 7. But it doesn't. It starts with a 5. So here we only have one candidate elimination available. So let's draw the chain. So there's the chain, and remember the blue links are strong links and the green links are weak links. And where there's not enough room to draw the link, like here in these two cells, I just leave it blank and you just know that there's a strong link in there, okay? But remember, you can start on either end of this chain and get the exact same result. So this time, for this first example, let's reverse the chain and start on the 7 so we can see it both ways. So this time we're going to start on the 7 and make a strong link to the 6, weak to this 6, strong to the 9, weak to that 9, strong to the 5, weak to the 5, and strong to that 5. So now we know if this 7 is false, this 6 is true, this 6 is false, this 9 is true, this 9 is false, this 5 is true, this 5 is false, and this 5 is true. So if the blue 7 is false, the yellow 5 is true. Which means if this blue 7 is false, the 5 would be the solution to this square in row 1, column 1, and that would negate the 7 and the 6. And if this 7 were true, then this 7 would be false because there can only be one 7 in that block. So this 7 is false either way, and you can eliminate it. And as I pointed out before, the 5 does not appear in this cell here in row 2, column 3, so there's nothing you can do there. So there's the new chain starting on the other end. And remember, we can make no conclusion about this 6 that's kind of covered up here in row 1, column 1. The only thing we know for sure is that red 7 is going to be false. Now for you more advanced players, if we make a weak link from this 7 to this 7, now all of a sudden we have what's called a discontinuous nice loop. And that's because we have a strong link and a weak link on two different candidates in the same cell up there in row 1, column 1. And the result of that is that the weakly linked candidate in the cell of discontinuity, which is this cell, is going to be false. So you get the exact same result with the discontinuous loop as you do with the AIC type 2. Now to me, it's easier and faster to find the AIC type 2 because it's one less link. Now for those of you who might be interested, I wrote an article on the Enjoy Sudoku forum about a year ago on this very subject. So if you would like to read it, just Google debunking discontinuous nice loops and you will see one link to that forum and another link to my own website where an edited version of the same article now appears. And coincidentally, 
I use this very puzzle for the various examples that I demonstrate. And don't worry, I will go over everything in that article when we get to tutorials number 41 through number 44 on discontinuous loops. But there's something else going on here in this puzzle that I would like to show you. Let's get rid of all that. If we start here on this 7 and make a strong link to the 6, weak to this 6, strong to this 6, weak to this 3, strong to the 3, weak to that 3, surrogate weak link, and then strong to the 9, and then weak to this 9, and finally strong to the 7, we have an AIC type 1. And so the two endpoints are the blue 7 up here in row 2 and the yellow 7 in row 9, which means any other candidate 7 that can see both of those is going to be false, and we've got three of them. One, two, three. So actually, the AIC type 1 is more productive than either the AIC type 2 or the discontinuous loop. So you need to be able to watch for everything that's possible. But you would probably be able to eliminate those three sevens by some other means later on in the puzzle. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, here in this puzzle, we've got an AIC type 2 that's short and sweet. We're going to start here on this 7, make a strong link to the 3, a weak link to this 3, that's a surrogate weak link, and then a strong link to this 3, a weak link to the 9, and finally strong to this 9. So there's the chain, and the start digit is 7, and the end digit is 9. And so we know we can eliminate the start digit from the end cell, and that would be the 7. And we can eliminate the end digit from the start cell, but the 9 does not appear in the start cell. So there's nothing you can do. There's only one candidate elimination. Now remember, the two cells containing the endpoints must see each other. Like, for instance, if these were the two endpoint cells, and the chain started on this 6 and ended with that 7, you would know that if the 6 was false, the 7 would be true, and if the 7 were false, the 6 would be true. But that doesn't get you anything. In order for you to make any candidate eliminations, those two cells have to be in the same house, and that could be a row, a column, or a block. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, here in this puzzle, let's start on this 5 and make a strong link to that 5, and then we're going to make a weak link to this 5, strong to the 9, surrogate weak link over to this 9, then a strong link to that 9, a weak link to the 8, and finally, a strong link to that 8. Okay? So here are the two endpoint cells. The start digit is 5 and the end digit is 8, so you can eliminate the 5 from the end cell, and the 8 does not appear in the start cell. So all you can do is eliminate that 5 and move on. Okay, next one. All right, here in this puzzle, we're going to start here on this 1 and make a strong link to the 3, a weak link to this 3, a strong link to this 3, a weak link to the 2, a strong link to this 2, a weak link over to this 2, and finally, a strong link to this 2. So the start digit is 1, and we can eliminate that from the end cell, and the end digit is 2, and there is no 2 in the start cell, so all you can do is eliminate the 1. Let's put it back in and draw the chain. So we've got a strong link from the 1 to the 3, a weak link to that 3, strong to that 3, weak to the 2, strong to that 2, a surrogate weak link over to this 2, and finally, a strong link up to that 2. Does everyone see that? Okay, great. Let's go to the next one. All right, here we've got another short one where the endpoint cells lie in the same block. So let's start on this 5 and make a strong link to the 6 in that by value cell, then a surrogate weak link to that 6, a strong link down to this 6, a weak link to the 1, and finally, a strong link to that 1. So the 5 is the start digit, and you can eliminate that from the end cell. And the 1 does not appear in the start cell, so there's nothing you can do with that. You just eliminate the 5 and move on. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, here in this puzzle, the two endpoint cells lie in the same row, row 6. Let's start on this candidate 6 and make a strong link to the 3, then a weak link to that 3, strong to the 2, weak to the 2, strong to this 2, weak to this 2, and strong to this 2. So the start digit is 6, and you can eliminate that from the end cell. And the end digit is 2, but the 2 does not appear in the start cell, so that's all you can do. All right, these are going by pretty fast, so let's do a few more. Okay, here we have one where the endpoint cells lie in the same column, and they lie in the same block. But you only need one house. They just need to be able to see each other. 
So we're going to start on this 9 and make a strong link to the 6, a weak to that 6, strong to that 6, weak to the 3, and strong to the 3. So the start digit is 9, and we can remove that from the end cell. And the end digit is 3, and there is no 3 in the start cell. So that's all you can do. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, this time our endpoint cells lie in row 3, and they can see each other. So we're going to start on this 8 and make a strong link to that 8, weak to the 2, strong to this 2, weak to the 6, and then finally strong to that 6. So there's your chain, and the start digit is 8, so we can eliminate that from the end cell. And the end digit is 6, but it does not appear in the start cell. All right, next one. All right, this time our endpoint cells are in row 1, and there they are. And we're going to start on this 5 and make a strong link to this 5, weak to this 5, strong to this 5, weak to the 4, strong to this 4, and then a surrogate weak link to that 4, a strong link to the 3 in that by value cell, weak up to this 3, and finally strong to that 3. So the start digit is 5, and it does not appear in the end cell, but the end digit is 3, and it does appear in the start cell, so you can eliminate that candidate 3. Now let's put that back in there for a minute, and let's draw the chain. So there's your chain, and notice if we add an additional weak link from this 3 over to this 3, we have what's called a discontinuous loop type 3, where we have a strong link and a weak link coming out of the same cell on two different candidates, and we know that the weakly linked candidate must be false. So it's the same result as the AIC type 2. I know the cell of discontinuity is row 1, column 1 again, but that's just a coincidence. You just need to be able to recognize these one of those two ways. The AIC type 2 is a little more economical because there is one less link. But either way, this is a very, very common pattern, and you need to be able to identify them. All right, let's do one more. All right, this time the two endpoint cells are in column 5. They're here and here. And we have an AIC type 2 of 9 links. So we're going to start here on this 2 and make a strong link to that 2, weak to this 2, strong to this 2, weak to the 5, strong to the 5, weak to the 9, strong to this 9, weak to that 9, and finally strong to that 1. So there's your chain. The start digit is 2 and the end digit is 1. And the 2 does not appear in this cell down here, but the 1 appears in the first cell, so we can eliminate the 1 from the start cell, just like that. Okay, that's going to do it for today. Don't forget to click the red subscribe button and the little bell icon if you would like to be notified of new video uploads. In the next video, number 37, we will take a look at AIC's type 2 that have identical by value cells on each end, which will allow us to immediately solve both of those cells. This is by far the most desirable and productive configuration for these type two chains, so I hope you will join me for that very interesting and important lesson. In the meantime, be well and be happy.